just you know they're gonna be they'll look a little more compacted for about eight eight more weeks okay and then we'll be just done to our our, our breeders and uh, so you can kind of see he kept calling me and saying they're not going in the house you know and so basically what happens is they want a little bit of space it's, you know it's like a whole bunch of you put us all in a room or in a cell <laughs> and you kind of go man I need some space so they're they go up top and perch, and they perch in here, and they're perching out here, and they're on the, the scaffolding. Are they in these trees too? Trees over there? So they're perching up in these trees, but you notice where they're all coming back to. By the way, look behind you. Now it is borderline going to be almost in a bit, if it gets a little hotter, they'll be like, you guys can stand in the sun, but we're heading for the shade. But, because uh, they are, and also just a little husbandry thing while we're out here. Chickens and turkeys pan. They're not dying. They pan when it gets hot, you know, and a lot of newbies, people who haven't been around large flocks, you know, um, and he's got the automatic water over there, and so. It was, this isn't perfectly ideal. <laughs> what Jim was saying earlier about them. they're in the shade but they got to get in the sun to get water. But at the same time it's starting to cool off a little bit. Uh, it's being given to September and whatnot. And Plus, I think the water are there for the hot afternoon the sun is here so the heat of the day the water is shaded. Yeah. There's a feeder around the, the other side. On the other side. What do you do about wild turkeys? Can they bring anything into your flock? Have you seen any? I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any. They do. Sometimes they will cross over. Um, will they bring no. They're, they are. And see this little area, when I move this again, I might put it in there. It's like I was saying, in terms of pasture fertility and cleanliness and all that like this isn't horrible but this isn't too great the grass and how it's matted but they got a whole area down there the size of this big one that I mean you can kind of see it there's big tall grass and trees and all that stuff so they kind of hang out around home base but when you move the hut then they they follow yeah because they'll follow their that's the only control I have is their food water and their main purchase do you hear that Rocco said his only control is when he moves the house, the water and the feeder go with it. So that's where they go. If he moves it over there, they'll, they'll move in that direction. Other than that, you know, I think it was a huge relief for him to hear me say, just let them go. Just let them, <laughs> they're up there and he's like, you know, he was in the beginning, he maybe spent a couple hours getting all the birds off the roof and putting them inside and, you know, and. Turkeys are weird that way, and you just kind of, just got to kind of let them do their thing, you know, so. But if, it's true what, what he says, though. I mean, if they're in that tree at night, and they come back here in the morning, and if they get out of the fence, and they spend their time trying to get back in it, as long as I'm willing to come down here and put my birds back in, I don't, I don't really have a lot to lose. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll roam a little bit, and this is just me, everyone's farm is, is different, but. But I, I don't, you know, no coyotes or wild dogs are going to get them 30 foot in a tree, so I'm not too worried about them. Better than them all cramped in here. Or yeah. The door shut, so. Yeah, like, see, those guys are like, hey, how do we get over there? They are there. That's where they have a pair So, any questions while we're here? What are these things? Oh. These are, um, these are lights. They're solar powered. Uh huh. And this little light 
will flash just like a oh, you know like a Christmas light thing. Okay. And, um, One of those Hawkeyes we were talking about. Right? Is yeah. that for Predator? Yeah, and it's yeah, it's Predator control. Where did that come from? A friend of mine gave me this. It probably. They're Premier? in that. Nope. That. Uh, is that the one that Premier One had. Premier yeah. One. Mm -hmm. They have shade over there. How and when can you What's purchase that? the birds? shade over there. The birds? Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, they'll find shade. Well, Jim will have a network of other breeders. I mean, these birds probably won't start laying until next spring. Mm -hmm. um, so. I mean, All right. As far as this fog. Let's slowly make our way that way before some of you turn into a turkey and look the shape. <laughs> going to be almost right the same way. They won't be small. And uh, then you want to look at the parents' side. And uh, Tony, we have Paul and Snatch and Delon. You always have that in the world. And take a look at it. So, you guys, uh, Rocco, uh, I think we met a couple years ago, and uh, actually I think we met over the greenhouse issue. <laughs> but, um, so in the last year, he started with uh, Buckeyes from one of our certified flocks, and he, um, and just in the last six months, he invested in the incubator and the hatcher, and now he's hatching his own birds. And so he's come full cycle. He's learning the art of incubation, and these are some of the offspring of, of his Buckeyes. And uh, we set up the breeding pens, and he can tell you how many families do you have here? Two or three? I have two breeding families. Two breeding families, so if you go in here and pick a bird up, I can say who's the dad, and he can tell us who the dad is. All right, and so this is this would be uh, a second generation of his of his breeding flock, and these are some young buckeyes in here. And uh, so we're going to go look at the some of the breeders there down there in that other pen. Any questions about that? Um, I don't know precisely, but accurately, um, six, probably six weeks ago or so, this is where the, the turkeys were, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, and the last place they were before they went out there was right here. They were right in the middle. You see that kind of bare spot? Yeah. That's where the, the house was. Um, and then this, this looks like it's where the feeder was, if I had to guess. But anyway... Just to kind of give you an idea, and then this is in comparison with, say, the pasture behind us. So it is shorter, but you can see a recovery time, and you can see mainly I've got clovers and grasses, and you know, we still have weeds. I mean, um, horse, horse nettle and amaranth and that, what is that, nightshade over there? Um, but this is just kind of a, to give you a little, a little reference as far as fertility and pasture goes. And it has to do with um, the size of your area, the amount of animals that are in it, and the, and the, and the time of year. You know, it, if, if it were December, it would look different than if it's April. Um, now, again, Rocco, when you had them here, did they go on that tree? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of flying up there, look. Wow. Yeah, that, that, you know, it's, it's comical. That was their learning tree. Right there. That's where they learned to, to do that. Their house was parked right right here. Um, but in summer, I was, I, I may, maybe you heard me or not out there. It's September. It's just now starting to cool off. It's warm out now, but it's, you know, I don't know. It's the heat of the day. What is it? 2, 2 o'clock, 2.30. And it's not, I mean, this isn't July or, or August. So I'm a little less concerned with shade. May, June, or excuse me, June, July, August. <laughs> Definitely got to give them at least a tree. Mm -hmm. You 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 got to give them some shade and put their water in it. You know, don't stick their water the black water. I don't know why they're all black. They get so hot <laughs> out in the middle of the of the sun in the middle of the summer. Um, and again, this is just kind of just to give you a little a little reference. Because um, parts of the paddock when when they got off of it were similar to some parts out there. Um, a little, you know, a little bare, but still some green. Not total dirt, but not, 
you know, big lush grass. So, and you know, I'm still playing with that. There's a lot of forces at work with all those combinations. Um, but again, this is just kind of a kind of a reference. This little spot here, where you can see that the grass is shorter than over there, is where. Uh, and that was with the netting went. too, wasn't it? Excuse me. That was with the netting. That as was well. with the netting. All right, with All that right. thought, get over here to some shade. I don't want any of you. You guys just gather outside the fence here. And uh, adult chickens do great with this netting. All right, you can set up a breeding pen like he's done here. They're not going anywhere unless, you know, they're not leghorns and can fly over this too easily. And uh, do you really deal with the Buckeyes getting out at all? They don't really mess with it. Okay. They don't really get out. What about dogs? Do they get in for the bedding? Well, if you, do you see dogs trying to get in these at all? Why don't you come over here and talk husbandry a little bit, and I'll catch the birds. What about coyotes, too? Just, they want to know, you know, about... Why don't you tell them? I'll tell you a couple things. Tell them if you ever had predator issues with them. How often do you move this fence with this breeder? Uh, how do you keep it, you know, when do you turn it off, when do you turn it on? And, Walk through some of that. I, for about a year, didn't have a fence. I had what I called home base on the big green house. Food, water, roosts, perches, laying boxes, all in one spot. You open the door, they all go out, they do whatever they want. They all go in at night, close the door, and they're all set. Um, and I got away with that for a long time and I really loved it. It's very beautiful, it's totally free range, it's totally free choice for the animals. I got here one day and about half my flock was scattered around. Um, a, a wild dog came in. Um, and I never thought it would happen to me. I never thought it would happen to me, one of those things. Um, but judging by what was left, it was, it was a wild dog. So, so then I started using this, this netting, which, which I am a fan of. Um, there's a couple ways to, to electrify it. The, the big one is a solar box, um, or it's a little battery that you, you plug into the, the end of it. Um, it's just a little clip and you plug it in and it pulsates. Um, sometimes I'll use that if I'm in the middle of, of the field. If I'm real close to the fence, and again, every farm is different, but I'll run, a, uh, I'll run a, a poly wire out like I use for the cattle and just plug into that with two alligator clips and plug into the grid. Um, this, they could stand to be moved. This isn't too bad, but you know, again, moving them really depends on in my opinion, the size of the paddock, the amount of animals, the time of year. Um, and, you know, I just kind of guess it. You can see there's, you can see it's been trampled. You can see where they spread around some hay under the tree. You can see how some of the stuff that they don't want to eat is, is overtowering the rest of the grass. It's not all on the same level. So, I mean, this could go for another week, but I could also move it tomorrow. Um, I don't know if that helps or not. Are there any questions about that? You kind of have to gauge it. You kind of have to play with it. Um, oh, excuse me. Do they have enough cover from uh, birds like hawks? Can they just go in there? Hawks? Yeah, they, they can go in here. Hawks are an issue. We all we all have our predators. I have hawks. Yeah, I don't know if everyone. In the city, I see hawks sometimes over the house, and sure. that is why uh, I'm asking. Sure. So you don't think it's a big problem? Um, I think they, they need somewhere to go for hawks. 
Um, they need to get in their house okay. or... But they, if they have something open to, to put, like the bushes, they could go in the bushes. They right? could, yeah. they could. A rooster is, um, and they'll all do it, but roosters especially will, will see a hawk. Uh -huh. And even with layers, if it's just egg production, just personally, I'll, I'll, I'll keep a, I'll try and keep a rooster in there just for some diversity in the flock. Um, they'll see a hawk or a bird of prey and they'll let out a special little call, a warning signal, and they'll all go hide in the nearest, the nearest hiding spot. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah